Hi everybody, it's Kayla, and welcome back to Fixer Upper, the show where I attempt to fix up your houses. Today, we're renovating the abandoned Spanish colonial by Madeline Sims 95 on the gallery. This beautiful Spanish colonial home was foreclosed on years ago and has sat empty ever since. A real estate investor recently purchased the property, but there is a lot of work to do before it is ready for market. And let me tell you guys, I love this house. I think it's so detailed and cute, and it's not furnished because it was abandoned and foreclosed upon, but I think that the shape of it is really cool and the architecture of it is really cool. And so we're gonna go ahead and give it an attempt at a renovation. I'm gonna give you a quick tour though. When you first walk up, there's a little bit of a courtyard. I like the style of the house so much. You know, it's one of my favorite styles of all time to build in. I like the courtyard and the front yard so much. I also like this little tower thing. I don't know, it's clever, okay? And the whole house, as you can see, is like falling apart. All these like chips in the wall and cracks and dirt and stuff. When you come up here, there's a front door this way into a living space. We've got a kitchen, which is all kinds of messed up. There's like a little courtyard in the back as well. And then you have around this hallway, some stairs into a basement, which take you into a big empty room. As you can see, there's like some sort of old laundry space over there. There's some stairs with no railing. You're probably gonna die. There's just a lot of empty room. There's actually a window down here that goes into the backyard, as you can see up there. And then this way, there's like a little teeny tiny bathroom over here, still with the scratches on the wall and all kinds of mess. And then you go back up the stairs. Around this way, there's actually a bathroom right here. You actually have to go outside and then back in to what I imagine is a bedroom. But I think that's really cool because it has this like courtyard kind of vibe. And so that's the entire house though. It's really, really small, but I think it's very cute. And with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and jump right on in to the renovation. Okay. Okay, so we are back and we are fixer uppering this house. That is right, you guys. I love fixer upper. I think it's so fun to tour your houses and like go in and renovate them and ruin them in some circumstances. And I like this house a lot. I liked how different it was from a normal style because I usually build a lot of like blue suburbans <laughs> and stuff. And I think that fixer uppers tend to be similar to that, like just like suburban houses and like farmhouses and stuff. Like I do the same one like over and over again, but this one was very cool and like, ooh, oasis, villa, Spanish colonial, wow. I wouldn't use the word villa. They use Spanish colonial, I call it a villa, that's wrong. But either way, I really like this house. I like the weird shape of it and like the courtyard aspect of it. I just thought it was really cool and unique. And that's kind of why I picked it. I like to pick houses like that. And again, you guys can build me houses for Fixer Upper on hashtag fix me Lil Simsy on the gallery. Uh, as far as picking them goes, obviously there are a lot of houses on, the, on that hashtag, so it's hard to choose one <laughs> every week. But if you guys build things that are a little bit, I don't know, unique, in a sense, I like that. I also like the backstories people write for them. So, I mean, if you're looking to get picked, I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm a sucker for a good backstory. We all know this. <laughs> I like details. I'm lame and annoying about that kind of thing, but I think it's kind of fun. So anyway, love this house and had a great time furnishing it. Although, um, the tea is that I streamed this <laughs> last night and I got so sick, like halfway through. I got this like awful headache and I thought I was gonna die. And so I ended up getting off stream early, <laughs> but that never happens to me, but here we are. So I don't know, maybe maybe we're dying or something, who knows? But either way, um, I'm, doing a, I'm doing better now-ish. Kinda have a headache still and it's the next day, so that can't be a good sign. But hey, you know what? It happens to the best of us. I took some medicine, we'll be okay, team. But I wanted to tell you guys a little story about my good old friend, Ninja. Now, I have given you some updates on this story in the past. I'm gonna tell the full thing and you're gonna make some judgments for yourself about the quality of Ninja's character because this person ruined my life. Ninja ruined Christmas and I'm gonna tell you how. Granted, it's a little bit after Christmas, um, so this has been a long-standing issue. Okay, so basically, <laughs> back in November, before Thanksgiving, which is, you know, late November, but not like super late November, um, I ordered some ninja merch for my friends for Christmas because it's kind of like a haha -ha meme, you know, to like get them ninja merch because we sort of like jokingly are ninja stands. And so because Ninja, if you don't know, he's the biggest streamer on Twitch. He's a huge deal right now. Uh, he had like a Times Square thing on New Year's Eve. Like he's, he's a Fortnite streamer, but he's huge, huge. <laughs> like this person is a really big deal. He's making waves in the internet communities, okay? And uh, my friends and I jokingly are really big fans of him, but it's not a joke, it's real, okay? We're really big ninja stands. Ex I mean, unfortunately he doesn't play with girls, so uh, I guess I can't be a ninja stand, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll tell the story for that really fast. Basically one time, 
I forget the exact context, but someone asked him why he doesn't stream with girls, and he was like, I'm just worried they're gonna think that I'm cheating on my wife, and so Ninja doesn't play with girls. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, <laughs> which, we don't need to get into that right now, but it's kind of a ridiculous thing for him to even comment on and say, but it's a funny joke to make about how he doesn't play with girls, so I guess uh, that's fine. Anyway, shout out Ninja one time. Great character, but I bought this ninja merch in late November and expecting it to get here by like December 18th so I could bring it to my friend's house in the UK for Christmas because, I mean, by the time that I left, I had ordered it like a month ago. Like it had been like a month since I ordered it. And so I figured considering he had two day shipping and like the standard is two day shipping that I would have my ninja merch before I left. Uh, I didn't have my ninja merch before I left. And, uh, Keep in mind, today is January 11th, all right? Yesterday, my ninja merch showed up at my front door. <laughs> now, can someone please explain to me how on earth that has happened? Because I got a message from the US Postal Service on like January or December, sorry, like December 20th or so, like 22nd, 18th, I forget, like somewhere around then, like after I'd already been in England, <laughs> it was like the day after I landed that it had been delivered. And so my dad was taking care of my cat while I was gone. And so I was like, hey dad, when you come over, can you like check for the package and like bring it inside? And he was like, there isn't a package. I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, um, I mean, Ninja said that my, my merch was delivered. So I don't know what you mean. And there just wasn't a package. Flash forward to today, like another month later, I, I ordered this merch two months ago. I finally have it. So I don't know what has happened there. I don't know what Ninja did. But he definitely ruined Christmas because I got to my friend's house for our squad mess. We were having like a friend, like a friend Christmas at my friend Jack's house in England, and uh, I didn't have the ninja merch. Like Jack and I had split the cost of this merch to like give. Like we all got matching ninja pond shirts, <laughs> which I know is really dumb. Okay, I know it's dumb, but it was fun. Um, we had split the cost to buy our friends these great gifts, and then Ninja ruined Christmas by not giving them to me. Like, how are you gonna say it's two day delivery, and then take two months? to deliver. Like, what's up with that? And it's ninja. Like, I don't, I don't understand how that happened, but it also, like, I read the fine print and it said that they take seven to 14 days to process your order and then two days to ship it, which, uh, you can't tell me that you're going to have two day shipping and then take two weeks to process. Like, you can't like sell it as two day shipping. Cause then people like, Ooh, two days. And then, but I didn't even pay extra. It was just like the standard was two day shipping. And then no, but it wasn't, it was two months. So my advice to you guys is to not order Ninja merch. <laughs> and it was expensive. I forget how much it costs, but it was not a good time. And I was not happy. I even emailed them angrily and didn't get a response. I said, hi Ninja, I ordered your merch and where is it? And they didn't reply. That's not what I said. I, I had like a real email that was like, hey, I'm leaving for the UK in a couple days. Uh, my merch isn't here yet. I'm a little bit worried about it. Didn't get a response. Email them again when I it was delivered and wasn't delivered and it still didn't get a response. So yikes at Ninja for that one. I can't believe that happened. I mean, I don't really care because I like at least I have it. And I mean, I've sort of accepted the fact that I didn't get to give them as Christmas gifts because it's been a long time since that happened. But I still just can't believe that it took two months to get ninja merch. Like I, how, how, in what world? Like we live in a world where you can get Amazon delivery in like two hours in some places. And it still took me two months to get ninja's merch. Like where, where am I? Okay, anyway, it's 2019 ninja, get with the program. <laughs> Leaving toxic people in 2018, I am not bringing toxicity, Ninja, into my life this year. Um, so I'm burning his merch, and that's my final decision. Can you imagine if I burned Ninja's merch? I paid a lot of money for that stuff, I'm not burning it. I can't wait, I'm, I'm actually going to England in like two weeks to see my friends again, so it actually ended up working out. I found really cheap flights. Turns out nobody goes to England in like January, February, because why? Uh, and so I found pretty cheap flights. They were like $400. And so I was like, hmm, $400 for round trip international flight? I think so. And so I'll be, um, I'll be over there in a couple weeks. Guess I am pre-recording for something now. Uh, but I'm, I'm gonna bring the Ninja merch. I'm really hoping that, like, my suitcase gets extra checked or something. I shouldn't say that because it's gonna curse me. But, like, imagine, right? They pull my suitcase out for extra checking and all that is in it, all that falls out is just bags of Ninja Pond shirts. I have, like, five of them that just, like, fall out of my bag and they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> 
Well, I, I, mean, I guess you're good to go. I don't, imagine they confiscate my Ninja Pond shirts. It took me two months to get them and I still can't have them. Sorry, I shouldn't joke about these things. I shouldn't even, we shouldn't even make jokes about my Ninja merch getting taken away from me because it's, it's too soon. I don't think I'm ready for that yet. I'm really not. Yeah, but anyway, shout out Ninja one time. Imagine being Ninja. Like, imagine being that big of a deal. I'm sorry, I know that sounds dumb, but like, kind of wild how that works out, huh? Also, I'm pretty sure in this house, back to the house really quickly. <laughs> this house, I only use a couple packs on it. I use the base game, obviously. I use Laundry Day. I use Seasons. It might actually only be Laundry Day and Seasons. I've, I've been trying to limit my packs a little bit because I'm aware that most people don't have all the packs, obviously. It's just when I'm building, sometimes I get inspired and I just want to use all the, the cool things we have in the game. But I do want to also make houses you guys can actually play in, and so I've been trying to limit my pack usage a little bit, and this one's only the two packs. I wanted to use Laundry Day because I liked the style of the objects, and also I wanted to have a laundry room because the original house had in the basement a laundry room, and I wanted to keep that up, and so I, I kept it there. I never have basements in my houses, so it was kind of fun to do that again in this one because there's one bedroom upstairs and one bathroom, and then in the basement there's like a desk, a bedroom, and a laundry room slash half bathroom. There's also a really cool window from the basement that's like in the front. Their house had, the original house had one of those too, but it was in the back of the house, but I switched where the basement was to move the stairs. And so I moved the window to the front, but like there's still a window in the basement because there's like this opening. Granted, it's not very practical because you'll see it when I build it later. It might actually already be there, but you'll see when I go to the basement. It's just like a, an a empty room with no ceiling and then a window. <laughs> so the view from the window is just a wall, but it does let in some natural light. And so realistically, if you're gonna have a basement bedroom, you're gonna, you're gonna want a window. And so they got a window, that's always fun. I'm really happy for them there. Love that. I think most houses in real life that have basements, I'm, I'm going off of my grandparents' house because my grandparents have a basement like that, but they have like sort of a similar thing with like that just like empty room kind of, but there's like stairs down into it and there's a sliding glass door. So it's not as bad, but it's similar to have like this weird like dip into the ground and then like stairs and then like a sliding glass door. I don't know, kind of strange. A lot of houses will have like tiny windows at the top of the basement because the top of the basement is like slightly above ground. So that kind of thing happens in real life. Granted, I live in Florida and so there are no, there are no basements here. <laughs> um, the water table is too high and so no one has basements in Florida. Um, but I, I was born in Illinois, okay? I've seen a basement or two in my, three, I've seen three, I've been in three basements in my day. Well, I'm talking about my grandparents' house and my old house, both my grandparents and my old house, but I'm pretty sure I've been to like my friends' houses that have basements. I just, my point is that um, I'm really experienced in the field of basements and so you should trust my judgment here, okay? Thank you and good night. <laughs> Is it possible to be experienced in the field of basements? What are your thoughts on basements, you guys? I'd love to know because my mom has told me she's always been scared of basements and it's because when she was younger, like her house was kind of spooky, like the basement was like, ooh, spooky. And obviously like I never really had a basement when I was young to be afraid of. So I'm not really scared of basements, I don't think. They just seem like another floor of the house and it reminds me of like my grandparents' house having a basement and stuff. But my house and my parents' house, they have a bonus room upstairs, which people always tell me is a loft. It's not a loft. It's like, um, it's sort of like what a basement is, like one big like open room with like a bathroom, but it's on the top floor. It's not an attic either because we have an attic above the garage. It's like a fully finished room. And it's just, it's like you go up into the stairs and it's just like this open room. Look it up, it's a real thing. A lot of houses in Florida are like this, okay? <laughs> but I used to be scared of that room when I was younger because like, obviously heat rises and stuff, so like it was really hot up there. Um, and so it was never fun to go up there. And also it was like spooky, it was like the upstairs. No one ever goes into the upstairs really unless it's like my dad or something. And so like I was always terrified of the upstairs, the bonus room, you know? But my mom was scared of the basement, like the downstairs, no one goes in the basement. So I'm curious like what your experience with like, what's the spooky room in your house? What's the spooky thing that you were scared to go into? Cause there's got like, is it the laundry room? Is it like the weird hall closet? Like what, let me know. There must be something, right? Everyone's scared of something when they're like six, <laughs> right? Maybe I'm just making that up. I don't know. I'm, I'd love to hear about it. In this house, the spooky room, I think, is the uh, empty open box window place. I don't want to go there. I imagine there's a lot of spiders down there. So I'm not interested in that actually at all. 
but let me know in the comments down below what are you scared of what's your biggest fear i used to have oh my god i was so scared of fire when i was young now i'm scared of ninja but when i was little i was terrified of fire like i used to have nightmares about it all the time and i used to i remember one time I would I saw like a light flash out my window and I was like it's a fire and I freaked out and I used to also be scared because the light in my hallway was like kind of like orange toned and so when I would see it under my door like shining through under my door when I was trying to sleep when I was little it, I was like it looks like a fire and I was, so I was so scared I used to like hide blankets under my door to like block the little sliver of like openness under it so that I wouldn't see the fire outside of my room <laughs> Which I know is really dumb, but like little kids do weird things. Okay, it's not just me I'm sure you did dumb things like that, too. Let me know in the comments down below. Also, you might be seeing here. I um I just put toilets in every room of the house <laughs> And it's because okay, so basically one time I was streaming a build and I had like half broken down a bathroom and I was renovating a house and someone was like freaking out in my chat because I left the furniture of the bathroom still there but I broke the walls down so there was like a toilet floating in the middle of the room and they're like freaking out they're like oh my god you forgot the toilet and they're like yelling and stuff um and now it's <laughs> they they said it like one time but a, a few people were like you forgot the toilet and it's been like this funny haha -ha meme ever since and so I forgot to put a toilet in the laundry room at first and then I said it I was like oh, I forgot the toilet and then everyone was like oh my god haha -ha, you forgot the toilet and then um to be a petty little brat I went and I put toilets in every single room and I was like sorry who forgot the toilet now and then um yeah so there were there was at one point seven toilets in this build um i'm really sorry about that <laughs> but you guys on that note i'm gonna go ahead and actually cut off right here i hope that you enjoyed the video make sure to go ahead and leave a like i said go ahead twice and comment and subscribe and do all those funny youtube things and in case you guys didn't know i post new videos every single day and so i will see you all tomorrow bye everybody I can't believe I fully just asked you guys to like disclose your biggest fears in my comments. Like, <laughs> I mean, do it. I'd love to hear them, but still, like, what am I thinking?